Let's now bring in the executive director of the National Steel Bridge Alliance, Charlie Carter. He is also president of the American Institute of Steel Construction. Uh, Charlie, thank you so much for joining me this morning. The force of this cargo ship that crashed into the bridge was enormous. I mean, the dolly is nearly a thousand feet long. As you know, as you've seen, a lot of people playing the blame game right now as we all wait for more answers. But is any bridge in the world meant to withstand that kind of impact? Well, that's a that's a, an insightful question. The, if this bridge had been designed today, there would have been a peer protection system that would have been capable of stopping or uh, diverting uh, the, the ship from hitting the pier. Um, clearly, the the pier of the bridge was damaged or destroyed by the ship, and that's what resulted in the shocking uh, collapse that we saw. But um, uh, Yes, you, you, you can uh, prevent this from happening. Mm. Construction, I know, is ongoing in Delaware on a $95 million bridge collision protection system there for the new Memorial Bridge. Uh, so would that type of system have prevented this collapse? I mean, did this need to be updated since it was first built? That's exactly the point of these systems. The bridges designed in the 70s like this one didn't have these kinds of systems today. We do use these kinds of systems because we know uh, that impacts like these are a possibility, and obviously the consequences are much higher uh, than uh, than uh, the, the cost is much higher than the cost of putting in a system like this. Mm -hmm. The other question I wanted to ask you because yesterday we had this question, but investigators and officials were so focused, uh, as you know, rightfully they should have been on search and rescue at the time. But when you see the damage that's been done on such a vital bridge, what's your estimate on how long it would take to get the Francis Scott Key Bridge back up and running again? Yeah, that that is that would be speculation. There, there are a lot of phases here. They're still in recovery mode for uh, the people who were unfortunately killed in, in this tragedy. There is then the NTSB investigation. Uh, once that happens, they, they can begin to clear um, the debris from the bridge and reestablish the port. But I, I'm certain that, that plans are already being made toward uh, the process of replacing this bridge. And we know how to do that quickly. Uh, the, the best way is for uh, the DOT, uh, Department of Transportation, to, to bring in the team and talk about it from day one. The team of the structural engineer, the, the the general contractor and the steel fabricator to plan this project for speed from the beginning and get this all reestablished as quickly as possible. Yeah, it is obviously a necessary artery, not just for drivers on a day to day basis, but also shipping along the East Coast. Charlie Carter, thank you so much for your time, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. Also, don't forget to click that red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.